wouldn't necessarily consider myself to be a drunk. Per se. I know I'm from Wisconsin and a lot of people are gonna put Wisconsin in that category of oh they're a bunch of drunks well I beg to differ I like to think that us people from Wisconsin are professionals but here's the deal this pandemic sucks and work is just freaking crazy but if there's one thing I will say about this pandemic is it has afforded me to go out and kind of experiment and open up this huge wide door of the world of whiskey <laughs> Let's drink some whiskey. Kick the intro! this channel business out of the way here guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that bell notification got new videos coming out pretty much every week if you guys like what's going on in these videos it would be a huge honor to me if you hit that like button helps me out a ton let's get right into it guys so out of just having to stay at home and the bar is now at home uh, I have decided to kind of open my world up open the door the great wild door of the whiskey world and I'm not gonna lie to you guys at all I am NOT a whiskey expert by any means I could not sit down and have a super intelligent conversation with somebody that's been into whiskey their whole lives but what I can tell you is I do like whiskey. And what I have found is there's basically two things that really calm me down. When all the stress from work and the pandemic and all this crazy news and the election and all of this stuff, there's nothing quite like at the end of the day, pouring yourself a nice glass of whiskey, lighting up a real nice cigar, going out to my patio or my backyard oasis as I like to call it, and just kind of looking at the sky, putting on some good music, me and the fam out there, the dogs running around the backyard. Whew, ain't nothing wrong with that, right? So what I decided I wanted to do for you guys today was kind of show you some of these whiskeys that I have been trying. So I basically started my whiskey journey with Southern Comfort. Southern Comfort? Yeah, I know, I know, calm down, calm down. Technically not a whiskey, I get it. But back in my uh, college days, I guess, that was my drink of choice. And then I quickly graduated into other things such as Jack Daniels, Gentleman Jack, and then some of this other stuff. Well, in this time of this pandemic, I've decided I wanna try some different stuff. There's a huge world of whiskey out there. And as I kinda dive deeper into this whiskey world, there's a million different terms and a million different kinds of whiskey. There's single malt, you got your blended malt, you got your single barrel, you've got scotch, you've got Irish, whiskey you've got American whiskey you got American bourbon uh, you've got cast strength you've got rye whiskey you talk about grain you talk about sherry barrels two char barrels three char barrels old barrels new barrels reused barrels all of this kind of stuff that I don't really know a lot about but it's pretty fascinating just so much to learn about whiskey but really at the end of the day it's however you like it it's your specific taste preference right so basically what I did is I grabbed four bourbon whiskeys. A bourbon whiskey is a barrel aged American distilled whiskey, primarily made of corn. Picked four of my favorite and I kind of set a price range of between anywhere from between $25 to maybe on the little bit of the higher end for me and my budget, $50. As you guys know, there's some bottles of whiskeys that are hundreds of dollars, $200, $800, thousands of dollars. Yeah, homie don't play that. We're talking $25 to $50. Something that can be an everyday drinker, uh, something that I can go back out on the patio, light a cigar, and just enjoy a nice glass of whiskey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of these for you, tell you which one is my favorite, and just kind of do a little scent and a taste profile of each one of them. So let's drink some whiskey. First one I got up on the board here is going to be this Russell's. Very good whiskey. This Russell's is going to be 45% alcohol, so it is 90 proof. Most of these are gonna fall into that range right around 45%. This is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Right here, I got my Glen Cairn glasses. I'm getting all fancy with the whiskey review here. Ooh, man, I need. I should've washed these glasses. You guys can get these Glen Cairn glasses on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. It's an affiliated link. 
Um, I will get a kickback, it helps the channel out, blah, 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 doesn't cost you any more. I think I paid 20 bucks for a set of four, but very nice little tasting whiskey glasses here. And so as I talk about the Glencairn glass, why is this glass important? So what they say is that if you just put whiskey in a regular glass, that's kind of just barrel open, what happens is that whiskey starts to immediately evaporate as you pour that whiskey. And it can have an influence on the taste. Whereas the Glencairn glass is more of a fluted glass. And so it's kind of keeping some of that essence of the whiskey in here. We're gonna do a little bit of a nose test. And for people that have not drank a lot of whiskey or smell a lot of whiskey, you don't wanna get your nose right in there and take a big old whiff, cause you're gonna get just straight alcohol as it's kind of evaporating up. So for me, who I don't have a ton of experience with just a plethora of whiskeys, I'm just gonna get around here. And I'm just gonna get the subtle hints of it. And there's a certain fruitiness to this. You can definitely get the corn out of that. I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper here. That's what she said. And it's very nice, maybe just a touch of that barrel at the end of it. So I've got it, I got a sense of the smell, right? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a quick little drink, kind of wash it right down, and just kind of get my first initial impression of it. <laughs> Bottoms up. On the first drink, at first it goes down real smooth. I do get a little bit of that pepper. I wouldn't say it's butterscotchy necessarily, but it does have a sort of a, uh, a sweetness to it. Not too brown sugary, but there's, there's a certain sweetness, a certain sugary essence to it. So, very good. Just kind of letting that one sit in the mouth a little bit before I put it down. Kind of get it on the palate there, wash it around just a little bit. And it's just very nice, very subtle, very easy to drink. It's good, it's good stuff there. So that's the Russell's. Uh, I think I paid about $25 for this bottle. Absolutely, a uh, perfectly fine everyday drinker. Next one up on the list is gonna be Buffalo Trace. This one is very popular. It's actually getting kind of hard to find. When I went to go buy this one, they only let me buy one bottle at a time. So let's take a sip of this one. This one on the nose, as I'm smelling it, it has way more of a sweet scent to it, more butterscotchy, a uh, little bit of a caramel scent to it. I want to say almost just like almost a floral hint to it. Let's get some down the old gullet here. <sighs> right down the hatch, I would say on this one, I'm not getting so much of a backfire of alcohol or a peppery taste to it. And maybe that's because I didn't clean the palate after I drank the last one. You don't get quite the burn that you get with the Russells and not that it's a bad burn, but it's just a little less present. Very good. I would say as I'm smelling this, it's way sweeter smelling than you actually get of the flavor, um, but it does have a ton of flavor in there. Not as much burn going down. Uh, there's a certain sweetness to it. Maybe a little more complex. I'm not getting just as much of the corn kind of taste to it, but very good, very easy to go down, very nice. I think you can get a bottle of this for right around $30. Again, 45%, just like the Russell's, uh, so it's gonna be 90 proof. Very enjoyable, very easy to drink. I can see why this is a popular option. Next up is going to be the Michter's, and this Michter's I picked up, I think I wanna say this is maybe a little more expensive, kind of your 40 to $45 bottle. This is a single batch, also a Kentucky straight bourbon. This Michter's, I really enjoy. This has your batch number up here. It does say small batch on it. I always love this sound. Oh, that sounds so nice. Let me get my nose in it here. Holy Caramel Batman. Very caramely right on the nose. Ooh, I like that. And I'm a huge fan of caramels or caramel. Me and the, me and the wifey fight about that all the time. Is it caramel or caramel? I grew up saying caramel, so I'm gonna stick with caramel. Yeah, just a very sweet, almost a brown sugary kind of a caramel scent to it. So let's get a little tasting going on here. Almost no initial burn. It takes a little bit longer for that, that whiskey burn to kind of come through and it just comes back up just ever so slightly. Very smooth, uh, just explodes the palate. It sounds so sexual, oh my gosh. This is very good. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, caramel, sweetness to it, not a lot of burn, very easy to drink. Nice robust kind of flavor to it. Smooth going down, I just, it, this one's really good. Really like this. Last but not least, we got Knob Creek here. There's nothing like grabbing a little knob at the end of the day. What? I believe Knob Creek is a Jim Beam sub distillery, sub, sub whatever. It's part of that Jim Beam Corporation. Uh, this happens to be the Knob Creek Single Reserve. This one's gonna cost you a little bit more. It's on that upper price range of your 
budget. I hate saying budget whiskeys because that gives a bad connotation. It's basically about 50 bucks a bottle. This is going to be 120 proof. So the proof is up on this, which means it's about 60% alcohol. Knob Creek is one of my favorite whiskey brands. I love the rye. I love the regular. And this single barrel, if it's on the shelf, I'm buying it. And if there's somebody that's looking for a good whiskey and they're standing next to me and I see them kind of perusing around, I suggest this one to them. So maybe I'm a little bit biased here, but this is by far my favorite whiskey that I've tried so far. So let me just get my nose in this one a little bit. Not as much caramel scent to it. I think I get more of a brown sugar. Uh, uh, I think I get more of a brown sugar kind of a scent out of it. I'm trying to see if I can smell that barrel in there. That's something that I see everybody talking about and I'm not sure I'm able to do that. Now, my, I got a Johnny Walker double black there and as soon as you pop that bottle open, you can smell that smoky char. Of course, that's different than a regular bourbon. Maybe as I become more adapted to different types of whiskeys, I'll be able to pull those scents. But hey, it smells good. Maybe just a hint of caramel in there, but not quite as much. Let's just take a swig. tastes like whiskey. You can definitely tell that the proof is up on this one. Whereas I would say with the rest of these, you take your swig and there's a moment there where you're not getting any kind of that whiskey burn coming back up. This one, as soon as it hits the taste buds, you can taste it going down, but it's not in a bad way. There's almost a spiciness and almost like a heat to it. I don't want to say that like it tastes like cinnamon or anything, but you can almost feel like a, like a heat. As soon as you take that drink, definitely a sweetness to it that I think is a pretty fair characteristic amongst the bourbons. I think that's maybe why it's more of a popular whiskey because of the uh, certain type of sweetness to it. And that sweetness is gonna come from that corn. But this is just awesome, guys. I, I really love the Knob Creek, so. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am gonna do something that you whiskey purists are absolutely going to hate. Uh-oh. What is he doing? Don't do it. Don't do it, Brian. Don't do it. Oh yeah, I'm doing it. He's not gonna put that Coke in with that whiskey and destroy the taste of that whiskey, is he? <gasps> uh oh. No! Ah, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. Mm. Ah. That's right. Cardinal sin for all the whiskey purists. Why are you miss? Why are you mixing? Why? I, why are you mixing your whiskey with here? Whew, maybe this whiskey is already getting to me. Look, that's the huge debate, right? Should you be mixing your whiskey with Coke? Comes kind of a cocktail at that point, right? Go to a bar. You're asking for a whiskey. You're getting a Jack Daniels and Coke, right? So here's my opinion on it. You work hard all day long. You go through the grind every day. You're making that paper. Listen, you're the one spending the money on the whiskey. Drink the whiskey however you like to drink it. You wanna mix it with Coke? Go ahead and mix it with Coke. Now let me give you a little tip. I would suggest doing what I do, and when I buy a new bottle of whiskey, no matter what it is, if it's a scotch or if it's a whiskey, I do like to drink it neat first without anything in it, no ice, no nothing, just to kind of get that flavor profile. And with all these bourbons here, guys, I think you'd be super surprised how well the actual taste profile of the whiskey holds up in the Coke. Did you guys hear my Canadian accent there? Coke. In the Coke, eh? Hey, take off, hoser. Look, this is how I drink my whiskey. I drink it with Coke. Now, I got a bottle of Glenlivet back here. Yeah, probably not gonna mix that with Coke. If I'm gonna spend a couple hundred bucks on a nice bottle of Johnny Walker Blue, Probably not mixing that with Coke. If I go out and I get a nice bottle of Macallan, I'm probably not gonna mix it with Coke. But look, I like the way it tastes and I don't care what anybody says because it's my money. I'm gonna enjoy it how I wanna enjoy it. Moral of the story here, don't worry about it. If that's the way you like to drink it, drink it that way. I can't wait to see the comments about that down below. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Man, all I know is after a hard day's work, super stressful, all of this stuff going on, I just like to come pour myself a glass, relax, light up a nice cigar, and forget about the worries of the world for a couple hours. So here's to you, cheers to you. I don't have any good whiskey toasts, but you know. Mm, so good, when it hits the lips, it's so good. Guys, this is my first whiskey review. Uh, I do plan on doing some more of these. I hope you've enjoyed it. I appreciate it if you stuck all the way through. Let me know what you guys think. Have you tried any of these? What's your preferred uh, bourbon? What's your preferred scotch? What's your preferred Irish whiskey? Uh, whatever it may be, you guys. I hope this was helpful in a way. Let me know if you like these kind of videos. I'll do more if you like them. Huh? If not, you know, well. <laughs> Thank you for checking out the channel. Don't forget to check out the website, briansbadassreviews.com. I do have a blog recently on there. 
on whiskey and coke. Is that a thing? Should it be a thing? Um, so go check that out. Catch me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'd be super honored if you guys decided to subscribe to the video. Can't wait to see you guys on the next one. That's all I got for this one. You know what I like to say, you gotta be kind to each other. You gotta do what makes you happy. That's it for me. I'm out. Peace. Oh, it's so good. So good. Mm, check this out. Mm. <laughs> That's gonna blow up the audio on it, right? All right, I'm really leaving now. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna go drink them. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for thanks for sticking around. Bye.